When it comes to techie plant watering, most product photos of moisture sensors understandably only show the business end. At best, they may have a token Raspberry Pi lying next door, but usually without power supply or other hardware. But the reality would be more like my prototype, with lots of messy wiring, which wouldn't look great in front of a plant pot. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I took Water Monitor 1.0 and packaged it up in a neat plastic case with its own rechargeable battery to hang on the side of the pot. The original project was conceived to ensure our Christmas tree didn't run out of water. And in the video I made, you can see how we set up the basic hardware using a prototyping board and adapted the Python code to flash our red LED when the lack of water was detected. You can find that video in the link above. But with Christmas long gone, I want to repurpose my equipment to monitor the houseplants as a more permanent unit with a much less Heath Robinson aesthetic. And with a rough idea about how all of this is going to work, the first thing to find is a box to put it all in. Small enough to look discreet, but obviously big enough for our Raspberry Pi Pico and all the other bits. And this little clear plastic box with its flipped off lid will fit the purpose perfectly. The next thing is to replace the prototype's breadboard with a more permanent solution to which the Pi Pico and other components will be soldered. And fortunately, I found this bit of error board in my box of bits, which is exactly the right width and I just need to trim for length and then take off the corners so it fits in the box. The board has a grid of pre-drilled holes, the rows of which are connected with copper cladding, which skips a column down the middle. So each side is insulated from the other which is absolutely perfect for our Pi Pico. I'll be soldering those header pins soon, but before that, I just want to look at what will be the heart of our power supply. A Pi Moroni LiPo shim, which has been specially designed for the Pi Pico for use with lithium polymer batteries. It would usually sit directly underneath the Pico, but fortunately the header pins are long enough for my circuit board to be sandwiched in between. With the Pico and the shim in position, the board doesn't quite fit into the box yet. It will need a cutout for the micro USB port, the position of which I'm marking up with a dry wipe marker. Now we come to the other components, and I've temporarily reassembled my prototype, because I want to move a few of them around a bit, and have the LED circuitry on the same side as the sensor stuff, so it'll fit more neatly into my box. This will require a tiny tweak to my programming, but with the Pi Pico, that's easy. Just plug the USB into the host computer, open Thonny, and find our program in the files on the left-hand side. As we've switched our LED from one side to the other, we will need to change the pin out to the new location, just change the number in that line of code. And with a quick test run, we see that it's working fine. With the programming updated, I can now start with the assembly in earnest, moving all of the components from my breadboard and onto the new circuit board, each one in the same position as it was on the original. The header pins of the Pico needing a little bit of encouragement to get through the holes. The cables for the moisture sensor will also need a way of connecting to the circuit, and I'm using a right angled header so they can plug in from the side and connect to the same pins as on the prototype. Now I'm ready to solder the pins of that header and for the Raspberry Pi Pico itself. With the soldering, I managed to make an even worse job than usual of keeping it neat and tidy. In hindsight, I think this might have been down to the board being a little bit old and me not cleaning it properly before starting and not keeping the tip of my soldering iron that clean. Since then, I've invested in one of these on the recommendation in the Hackspace magazine. I also really didn't need to solder all of the header pins, but I finally triumphed and it doesn't look that terrible. Now I'm ready for the LiPo shim, which goes on the pins on the underside of the Raspberry Pi Pico, which is now the top side of my project, having flipped everything over from the prototype. Fortunately, despite my messy soldering, those header pins are still long enough, and held level with a double-sided sticky fixer. I can solder all the pins in place. With the headers all soldered up, I can turn my attention back to the case, starting by drilling out the holes for the USB port that I marked up earlier, and then turning that into a slot by carving away at the relatively soft plastic with a sharp knife, gradually enlarging the hole and then tidying up the edges until I've got a neat slot that the USB port snugly fits in. And now our complete board will fit into the box. The last piece of circuitry that needs sorting is our flashing red LED and its accompanying resistor. For this, we're going to need the row on the circuit board 
beyond the end of the Pico. The long leg of the LED will go to pin 16, with the shorter one using that extra row going back to a ground pin on the Pico via the resistor. The resistor can be soldered through the board in a normal way, but the LED is a bit more challenging. I need that to be on the front of my board, so it shows through the plastic case when it's flashing. So I've put a blob of solder onto each of the legs, and carefully melted that onto the surface of the board, underneath the bulb. So the moment of truth, time to test the soldered version, and I'm reconnecting our sensor, making sure each of the pins is in the right place. Then plugging in the USB power pack, and switching on. The white LED on the shim shows that that's working fine, and with the sensor out of the water, our red LED flashes nicely, just as it should, going out again when immersed. So with our testing completed, and confident that we've got a working model, I can do a bit of tidying up, snipping off the unwanted extra length of the LED legs, and the ends of the resistor wires. As well as the slot for the USB port, we're going to have to make a couple of other modifications to the case. And with everything in position, I can mark up for where the three sensor cables will need to pass through, before carefully drilling. I want these to be square holes, so I'm just using a fine drill bit for two of the diagonally opposite corners of each, which I'll join up afterwards with the sharp knife. Again, gradually enlarging the hole and tidying up the edges as we go. I'm actually doing a bit of future proofing here as well. I want to try out a capacitive sensor at some point, instead of the resistive one, which is already tarnishing. So I'm just making an allowance for the extra cable, which fortunately can use the pin next door to the one we're using already. Now we're going to need a way of activating that on off switch. And I'm going for the old fashioned unraveled paperclip option, just drilling a small hole through which we can poke the switch should we need to power it down for any reason. The final adaptation of my box is to add a hook so it can hang off the side of the plant pot. And for this, I'm repurposing a roller blind child safety clip, which will be attached using some plastic rivets. I just need to cut off the end of the P-clip, the bit where it curves back on itself, to get an open-ended hook, which I'm doing with my razor saw, and then filing off the rough edges. This also leaves me with a usable hole, the perfect size for my plastic rivet, and I just need to drill an equivalent in the right place on the case. While the plastic is easy to drill, it's also prone to being a bit rough around the edges, so I'm going in with a fine drill first, and then enlarging later, to the correct size for a snug fit for our rivet, which just pushes through from the inside of the box, and the cap pressed on with the thumb. No tools required. Then before final assembly, I just want to add a little label for my sensor, so I get the wires in the right places. Even though the fit of my circuit board is pretty snug in the box, I want a way to keep it secure, and my first thought was to use the mounting holes in the Pi Pico, drilling them out through the circuit board, but that turned out to be a blind alley and way too complicated, with the bolt heads interfering with my hook. In the end, I just went for the straightforward double-sided sticky fixer, stuck between the head of the rivet and the flat bit of the Pico where the Raspberry Pi logo is. This simple solution turns out to be more than adequate, so I've used the same approach to attach the battery to the inside of the lid of the box, a little off to one side to allow for the LED, and I can plug it into the two-pin JST socket on the Pi Moroni shim, and our water monitor leaps into life, automatically launching our Python program, which interprets the lack of a sensor in the same way as a lack of water. Then having switched it off, I can carefully route those cables around the socket and close the lid. Now with a brief lurch in the continuity of the video, I want to look at the sensor cables, three of which I'm separating from a rainbow band of DuPont cables. These are joined together along the length, but easily pulled apart. I've chosen some muted colours, white and black for positive and negative, and a grey for the signal. The colour coding is also on my sticker so it's easy for me to get them in the right order, and they look so much neater than the straggly ones in my prototype. Now for the first test of the fully assembled unit, running on battery power alone, and it's working perfectly. Unlike the power pack we tried to use for our prototype, the lithium polymer battery won't cut out when there's a low current draw, the only potential issue being battery life, which I'll come to shortly. But operationally, it's doing exactly what it should, and I'm really happy with the outcome. But above all, I think it looks great, and it doesn't look out of place, hanging on my plant pots, reasonably unnoticed, 
until that red light starts flashing. And when the battery does need recharging, all I need to do is plug in the USB cable. And thanks to the LiPo shim, it'll continue to work and recharge at the same time. But that does bring us back to the issue of battery life, which isn't great with the setup as it stands. So I'm looking at sleep modes for the Pi Pico to eke a little bit longer out of it. But along with capacitive sensors, that will have to wait for Water Monitor 2.1 and a future video. For now, I'm just really pleased with the progress I've made to get this far. And if you've been inspired by this video, you'll hit that subscribe button and take a look at some of my other projects.